I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright, and I am here with the super millennial, Dave Abretto, giving us the millennial perspective. How are you doing, Dave? I'm doing good, man. How's it going? I don't know. My voice went somewhere. I don't know. Where it is. I, I don't know where it is. It's somewhere out here. I, I feel great, so I don't know. I guess uh, the vocal cords are just a little bit tired. I'm not <laughs> sure. So this week, our topic is developing wonder. Today's meeting of the minds. We're going to have a discussion on the wonder of principles versus rules. So before we get started, the Rise Up and Shift event is now just about. 30 days away, getting closer, five weeks. It's 9-22, September 22nd through the 25th. And I'm telling you guys, tickets are going. Don't miss this event. So if you're interested, the links are right below in the show notes. If you have any questions, contact Peggy at livingrightwithbillcourtright.com or David at livingrightwithbillcourtright.com. Don't contact Bill Courtright. All right. (laughs) So this week, our topic is developing wonder. Today, I want to have a discussion on the wonder of principle versus rules. And I have one theme for today on wonder, and that is freedom. So if we look at wonder, wonder is a state or feeling you get from something beautiful, unexpected, unfamiliar, or inexplicable. So I would like to take the first part of this podcast because I don't know what happened. I was writing this podcast. It became very reflective. And I just want to take it through my experiences into the lesson. Are you all right with that? Yeah, let's do it. So for me, I have experienced the stages of wonder that coincide with my experiences as my habitual states would shift over time. So my first habitual state I can recall is low red zone coming from a very abusive environment. At age seven, I remember being in the hopeless energy. Each day was built around fighting for survival. Then my grandparents rescued me, and I can remember as a small child experiencing the wonder. This new life was unexpected. I didn't know what was happening behind the scenes of my life. All of a sudden, my grandparents were fighting for me. I didn't know that. And when I moved and was taken in by them, it was pure wonder. The environment was unfamiliar and beautiful, but there were still the nightmares. So this would be a habitual state shift, and it moved me out of apathy of the low red zone into fear of the mid red zone. Now, in this habitual state, I felt somewhat paralyzed. I was still very uh, panic-stricken and anxious. My fear was quite simple. I remember it like it was yesterday, that this wouldn't last. But once again, my grandparents went to work healing me. And as I reflect, this again was an amazing state of wonder. It was beautiful, my grandmother, how my grandmother nursed me back to health. I had become very sick when, when they brought me in. I would get shingles and I would have a freaking nervous breakdown. And my grandfather went to work instilling in me discipline in my love of sports. He started teaching me things, which was very important. And this again shifted my habitual state. So I was now moved into that high red zone as I excelled in sports, especially the sport of golf. Now, I had this desire to make my grandfather proud and become a champion. And I kept improving. And as I kept improving, I again entered wonder as I actually began beating grown men on the course. Now, I was taught discipline. This is a sport of discipline, just like bodybuilding. And I practice hour upon hour by myself. One of the things that my grandfather really instilled in me was to be coachable. So he would teach me and I would just do what he tells me, even if it was uncomfortable. He he didn't use the word coachable, but he told me, you have to be able to take instruction and you have to be uncomfortable with the instruction. And so Sometimes he would change my swing. Sometimes he would do this. And I, and I didn't want to. 
but I learned to become coachable. And if, in that time, if I wasn't on the course, I was hitting balls at the large plot of land by the church. Or even in winter, I worked on my putting as my grandfather turned the entire one entire room into an indoor putting range. So even though I was in the high habitual state of the high red zone, at this time, I was still activated constantly in mid red zone fear. And to combat, combat that, I used food. And this is what would lead me to weigh in, in the high 270s at five foot five, five foot six of height. Then disaster struck. My grandfather was in a terrible industrial accident that actually had an acid explosion that burned 80% of his body. Now, this would put me in a very precarious situation at age 16 because my grandparents had to leave and go to uh, another part of the state. So I basically began to raise myself. Now, I've told the story of the next shift in my life, and it wouldn't come until I was 20, diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, weighing 278 pounds, and just kind of flailing through life. I was just, I was a mess. I was just kind Mm -hmm. of screwed. Didn't know what I wanted to do, uh, was really getting into drugs, drinking, um, really didn't give a crap about anything. And then the realization that when I got diagnosed, I was breaking my grandmother's heart was too much. And again, wonder struck. I would lose 123 pounds. I started, I started going to school, started college. And that's when I met Dan. Now, Dan instilled such a wonder. And this time that I was with him, I wanted to become a champion bodybuilder. And the wonder was instilled that I wondered what I could accomplish in bodybuilding. And understand at this time, anyone who heard me say this, I'm going to become a bodybuilder, they either laughed or they just thought this is impossible. Well, this shifted me into the habitual state of low green zone. Now, not only did my health and body shift from the valley to the mountain, my personal and spiritual development shifted as Dan taught me about the subconscious mind, how personal development worked, and a lot about stoicism. This shifted my career and this shifted my finance category. My life began to do, um, in my life, I began to do the unexpected. I was, I was just, my whole story starts to develop. And again, this is a state of wonder. Now, this process and habitual state remained for many years in the low green zone energies. Then in my late 40s, I got hit with a curveball straight to my head was a bad pitch. And my marriage fell apart. And then came Linda. Woo! She evoked a sense of wonder. She evoked a sense of wonder almost immediately. She was like no one I ever met. Strong, yet caring. Tough, yet loving. And my habitual state shifted again to mid-green zone and a full stage four. Now, this shift state put me in complete wonder, especially in my relationship category. I was now ready to listen. I opened my energy. I was willing to learn. I dropped my need to defend old beliefs. Thus, they fell away. And I was able to do, and my entire life moved into wonder. Now, this was an incredible life. And I had become good for the very first time in my life. I felt safe especially in the relationship category. I'd never felt safe before. Then the most wondrous shift took place as I went deep, deep into the darkest of shadow. Not voluntary, mind you. It wasn't a voluntary thing, but it was very guided and I had an immense release. Now, after that, for days, Barry, my ego, completely shut down. And as I moved into stage five interconnected mind, I moved into the habitual state of high green zone. Now, this took some time, people. This didn't happen overnight. And it took time to understand. The experiences in the state were something out of the spiritual things I was only reading about. And the first feeling of wonder was how my ego was taken offline and then completely disabled, unable to take conscious mind control. The second feeling of wonder had to do with the connection with God and the superconscious mind. And the access to information, content, and teachings. And the third wonder was the skill of conflict resolution and not being stressed out, not desiring to force things. Now, 
all of this, again, took time. It took years of development. And then I finally experienced the greatest wonder. And that's what we'll discuss in today's episode. That greatest wonder I experienced was freedom. I have, Freedom is defined as the power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants. Now, the freedom. I, you know, speak at, I speak of is awareness. The freedom to live in integrity of behavior. The freedom to behave as I choose versus habitual programming. The freedom to speak as I choose without the ego taking over in defend and attack. The freedom to think from my heart instead of my head. From the creation mind, true self versus the cage mind, false self. It is this freedom that brings me now into this consistent and constant state of wonder, living life from my center of consciousness. So if we look at freedom, freedom is a purple zone energy of 500 love, which when connected rises to fulfillment, 540 joy, which rises to completeness, 600 peace. And so that's kind of my journey, David. You were there for a lot of it, and well, at least the last part of it. And Mm -hmm. the thing is, is that I want people to understand that you can actually live in a sense of wonder, but to do that, you're going to have to continue to climb up the mountain and moving through those habitual states. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Anything you want to add? I'm sorry. You know, I got so streamed when I wrote this, I thought... Well, I should do a solo episode on this, but then I have a whole thing I want to teach. So I, want, I didn't want to do a solo episode, but your thoughts? No, I think it's a it's a cool thing to experience, you know, like you said, at least the, the last part of it. And it, it that to me um, showed me what it's like to kind of reach your arms out and feel no walls. You know, everything that you've said you wanted to do, everything that you said this company wanted to do, all these things kind of... I haven't seen restrictions from it. You know, you put out these crazy ass ideas and you tell me, I'm like, there's no way, but (laughs) I mean, he hasn't missed yet and somehow it works. And I think that's the the part about wonder and kind of the the imagination that you talk about is that, man, this was a crazy idea. But then when you really take those actions and people say, man, Bill's a robot because he wakes up at three o'clock in the morning and does this, 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 this. It's that drive, that spark from wonder and then creating it. And people wonder why, oh no, it's just a daydream. You know, it's because the actions that follow that you put in, that we put in after has really allowed me to kind of almost keep that childish um, thought of wonder and imagination, but then creating it into reality as the work goes into it. You know, I'm, I'm now... 10 days out from a competition, right? So it's really dialed in now. And it's, and it's, listen, every single piece of me wants to stop. Who wants to drive their body through this? It doesn't, you know, it's not a, it's not what I would say a healthy thing, just so you know. And I know what you're going to go through. And I think about you. I think, <laughs> oh crap. Now I, I just think about it because it will change you because every, bit of your ego is going to say stop. I don't care if it's the diet. I don't care if it's the training. I don't care if it's the posing. I don't care if it's getting the music ready. I don't care if it's laying out in the sun. I don't care if it's doing cardio. You get to the point where they're just, it's all will. It's all will. But man, every single day when you finish, it's like you're in wonder. And then when you step on stage, it's like, holy crap, it all comes together. So Mm -hmm. you're going to be experiencing that. I'm going to love to watch you go through it because you'll never be the same. And we talked about, you know, being coachable, right? You know, people that want to do bodybuilding, I I have a guy who wants to do bodybuilding and they, they just, to be coachable, you have to literally surrender and let somebody coach you. And Mm -hmm. especially in bodybuilding, golf is the same way. You're not going to, these are certain sports where, uh, yes, you want to give feedback and everything, but you got to be coachable. And so what I try to do is somebody says, he's in his fifties, wants to do a bodybuilding. First thing you have to do is you got to set the time you're going to get up and train and set the time you go to bed. 
Still hasn't gotten that down. Oh, then I want you to get this protein. No, it gets the wrong protein. See, that's not being coachable because basically you're just doing what you want to do. And when you don't get the results, that's not on me. Yeah. I'm, when you're coachable, I remember Dan, if Dan told me to eat a cat turd, I ate a cat turd. I did not <laughs> deviate. If grandpa told me, this is what I want you to swing like, oh my gosh, it's so uncomfortable. I don't want to do this. I swing. That's the way I swing the club. Mm -hmm. And then it carried over in my life a lot. We're going to talk about that carried over. Is it carried over in business? Because then I can learn from a, I had a great mentor in business. He was the CEO of Eastern Airline, the great late Phil Bakes. Man, I just listened. He told me to do it. I didn't question it. I didn't. When I have coaching clients that do that, they don't fail. That was Felix. That's Jason. That's Patrick. Those people do not fail. Why? They don't question just tell me what to do. Patrick came back. Patrick is somebody that he's our partner. You guys will be getting to know him. And he says, coach me hard. That's all you only got to tell me once, Pat. Here we go. You know, and that's a guy who is a strong stage for Felix. When he came in, coach me, tell me what to do. And he did it. Jason, tell me what to do. Do it. They don't deviate. And that's being coachable on a high level. When you do that, you move very quickly through the habitual states, but mm -hmm. you've got to have the courage to do that because it is uncomfortable. Your thoughts? Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I'm learning that now. And that has been not only just something that has boosted my progress, but also allowed me to fight my ego's thoughts and, you know, know what I have to do. Cause there's a lot of times where even now I have a, a new coach and, you know, learning to work with someone else and I have a good amount of knowledge and every part of me is like, I don't do it this way. Well, I, I hired somebody to tell me which way to yes. do it. And the cool thing about it is, you know, I'll do it. And then after a week or two, he'll say, how did you like those workouts? And I said, well, I normally do it like this and we have feedback. We go back and forth and he goes, okay, well, we're going to do it this way. <laughs> and he looks it in and do it in front of, you know, see, but the big thing is when I first started with him, he wanted to see if I would listen and he wanted to see if he's wasting his time because yeah. that's what you're really doing. You're wasting your own time, yeah. but you are wasting someone else's time who wants to see you grow, who wants to see you progress. He asked me what my goals were and he goes, okay. And I said, do whatever it takes. Tell me I got to be up at two in the morning. I'll yep. figure it out. Tell me I got to eat wake up and eat i'll figure it out and he was like most people aren't like that and i said you know what? if i didn't do what i did for the last year and work on myself and my own integrity and the volition i've had for this goal i wouldn't do it i know i wouldn't and that transferred over into being very coachable absolutely and progressed me tremendously so let's jump into that you're going to understand it for this thing so if you think about this we're we are born into a world where everything has been named by those who came before us we're programmed with systems of agreements that sets the rules we acclimate to in our reality. And these rules set our reality at how things should be based on how things were in the past. We do not question these rules and assume they are truth. And if something in your environment goes against the alignment of these set rules, we get activated in conflict and we go and defend and attack. These rules that were set for you defined your identity and your reality. The rules set within your programmed identity set your shoulds in life. And these shoulds drive your behavior in one of two ways. Either in resistance, this isn't what I should do, which becomes a can't energy of 50 apathy, or in attachment, this is what I should do, so I can be happy, successful, and find fulfillment, which becomes attached to magnetic desire. Mm -hmm. So if we look at a rule, a rule is something that should be done in a certain manner. It is understood that it is the way it is. We are born and immediately rule programming goes into effect. We get set with rules through our tribe, upbringing, culture, society, and through our experiences. And this is done through the collective agreement that you were born into. And the rules that sets your shoulds are in all five life categories, people. So in career for me, 
the rule was you work hard, you show up early, you find something that will give you security. And this set my shoulds early. And I talked about, I was just squandering through life. In money, finance, for me, the rule was don't waste because there isn't enough. Money doesn't grow on trees. And this set my should to save, but I never have enough because I was set in lack. Health, the rule was you exercise, play a sport, but then when you're too old, you just age according to the rules. This is what happens at 40. This is what happens at 50. This is what happens at 60. You only go to the doctor when you're sick and you don't leave the table without finishing your plate. That set my should to overeat even when I wasn't hungry. And then relationships. The rule was don't talk about what happens behind closed doors. Keep it very quiet. This set my should to repress and act one way in public, another way at home. And then your spiritual and personal development, the rule was must go to church and obey God's laws or you'll be condemned by God. Well, that's something I should to hide from God. And the should was to pretend to be one way while acting another way. <laughs> that's just the, It was the truth. So can you see how rules can set your shoulds, which sets your behaviors, which sets your realities? What are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I think it's interesting because I think at some point certain rules will serve you until they don't, you know? I think like having the rules for this bodybuilding thing, there's certain things that I need to, but transitioning out of it or going from like work to family time or work to husband time, things like that. Those rules aren't across the board. They need to be able to change and manipulate and things like that. Because they're not rules. They're called principles. Mm -hmm. Big difference. That's what we're going to talk about, David. A rule, there's no bending. And when you and the rule will put you in guilt if you don't do it, or put you in defend and attack. It puts you in should. It's our past history set through our identity that is always built on should. What should be is based on the past, but principles versus rules. And this is what you're learning how to set. Principles are fundamental ideas that govern our behavior. Principles are self-authored and internal, where rules are imposed on us from the outside. Principles are connected head, heart, and hand through integrity of behavior. So they're flexible, just like you said, where rules are forcing you to do what you think is right or correct. So when we shift and raise our habitual state, we raise our level of consciousness. We live through principles. This is self-authoring your life. This creates freedom and in turn, wonder. Rules, on the other hand, put you in a restriction state base energy of fear, this sets you in should. For an example, if you understand the principles of the diet in the go right lifestyle system, right? You set your diet in the principle of how your physiology works and you set your lifestyle in the principle to manage your state in the body stress response. The purpose of the diet is so you can go into the green zone. That's the principle versus setting rules for your diet. I must eat like this to lose weight. If I lose weight, I'll be happy with my body. When I fall, I shouldn't have eaten that. When I quit, I should eat this. And when you follow your rules and the scale doesn't move, I should lose weight. Expectation activates fear, activates doubt. You kind of get the picture. Yeah. When you set a goal in rules, there's a big difference when higher goal settings about identity-based goals. That means you're setting the identity. See, rules put us in a state of restriction, the base energy of fear. And this forces behavior while principles put you in that state of expansion, base energy courage, which inspires behavior. Does that make sense to you? Do you yes. see the difference of what your shift is now? Yeah, no, I think um, that's the, the the exact thing I was trying to say. Yes. I, I've learned that, you know, there, there's there been times, especially when I talk to people about my journey so far and stuff, they're like, what have you cut out, fast food or things like that? And that's because one of the, the rules that you hear everybody is you can't eat fast food. You can't. I was like, you know, on certain occasions, fast food has been my, my friend traveling, things like that. You know, and they're like, no way, no way. I was like, until you understand what's beneficial and like you said the principles to help you get to yes. where you need to be 
then there is no real good or bad unless it goes to those principles. But there is definitely no right or wrong way all the time. Because principles are in the green zone. So you go from courage to neutrality. That's flexibility. And then you go in the shift. You're, well, you're ready to listen, willing to learn, able to do, and you surrender. So rules are in fear. So you're either in desire, right, where you have resentment, mm-hmm. or you're down in apathy where you have regret. <laughs> Yeah. It's 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 the way it works. So people I know are now saying, yeah, I can hear them now. We have to have rules or we'd have chaos, right? Now imagine mm-hmm. if we remove the traffic lights and those red lights and rules to stop and the green lights, the rule to go. We'd have chaos, right? You think? Well, seven cities and regions in Europe did just that. The European traffic planner planners are setting streets free of rules and directives. The principle being that drivers and pedestrians for them to interact in a free, humane way by means of friendly gestures, nods of head, and eye contact without warning signs and restrictions. In the one Dutch province, 40,000 people live there, this principle of what's called naked streets was executed. No stop signs or direction signs, no parking meters, not even lines painted in the streets. The project's co-founder, Hans Monderman, stated, the many rules strip us of the most important thing, the ability to be considerate. We are losing our capacity for socially responsible behavior. So this seems unsafe, right? It seems like that has to be chaos, yet the results have been the opposite. Unsafe is safe. As strange as it may seem to us here, the number of accidents declined dramatically, as did the number of traffic violations. This new principle was so successful, it's now spreading to the bigger European cities. In Drakathon, 45,000 people, they have gotten rid of 16 of their 18 traffic lights. The only rule left is yield to the right. See, (laughs) freedom brings wonder. When you move out of rules, you move out of should. And we experience freedom. And we experience freedom when we connect to integrity of behavior. Now, to accomplish this, we must self-author our identity. This is done by releasing rules and shoulds and setting your identity principles. Number one, discover and know your purpose. Number two, Dig in and expose your rules and shoulds in all five life categories. Number three, let go of the rules and the and the shoulds and expectations and set your principles. Number four, you do this through higher goal setting process, which you'll learn at the event. And then number five, this is what I've done. List your 10 principles of engagement. And I'm going to give you my 10 principles of engagement. What I do. This is mine now, right? So number one, I focus on the what versus the how. In other words, I set intention in my identity each and every day. So I set my identity to start the day in a reality of prosperity. Number two, I live connected to my purpose and I'm aware A principle for me is to be aware of the pendulum swing. When I get frustrated, I know the pendulum swing. When we got on the call, right, we had a business thing we had to talk about. I was frustrated. There was a conflict. Brought to resolution, it's done. That's it. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you go, of course you got conflicts. Number three, be committed to the expansion state, which is what David just talked about. You have to go into neutrality. You have to learn that principles are flexible. And you have to be able to move with it. That's how life works. It's like a river going downstream. Sometimes there's boulders in the river. Number four, conflict resolution. One thing is very important is no complaining. If you're complaining, you're stuck in conflict. That is a principle of mine. Number five, do what I love and always be coachable grandfather instilled that very young and it still is. So I'll tell you how powerful this is. So I always do what I love. And that's, that's something I've done for a 
this is not new principles for me. I've done it my mm-hmm. whole life. So I'm coaching, I'm working with Coach Peggy. And she explains to me the energies. And I am ready to listen, willing to learn, and able to do. And and I'm allowing her to coach me on what she is, the feedback she's getting on what she's learned and her experiences. You know what that did? Changed everything. Everything. Uh, you know, I had to get rid of another manuscript, which I'm sure Shauna really loves as I work on the, the thirds, but it changed everything. For, but it changed everything. Coachable means that you're just ready to listen, you're willing to learn, you're able to do. Able to do means if you say you're going to do it, do it. If you're coaching with somebody and you really want fast results, surrender to the process and just do what they tell you. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, why hire them? If you're always going to every week not follow through, well, then you'll change, but the coach will have to get on your ass and constantly it's the same thing. It just takes longer. So that's number five. Number six is one of principle is have empathy, allowing others to be. Number seven, one principle I have is to close the day in forgiveness and let go always. So I forgive myself and I let go of all my conflicts. Number eight, Principle is finding out practice. I saw that Felix is starting to practice. That's the four R's. He was talking about it in the community. Mm-hmm. Number nine is for me is to embrace new ideas. In other words, be open. And we, I had a huge embrace with uh, Dr. Brian this last week. It's where we stay open to new things. And my last principle is to remove judgment. Is to remove judgment from my life. These are my 10 principles I live my life by. And you got to set your principles because you weren't born with principles. You were set rules. Mm-hmm. And if you have anything that well, you hear yourself should and you're shooting on yourself, that's a rule. You need to change that. So, David, you're naturally going through this progress and this progression of moving out of rules into this what we're talking about, these principles, because you're not going to do a bodybuilding show from rules. I'm sorry. Because if you're not flexible and you're not in principle and you're not coachable, forget it. Just just quit now. Go enjoy Mm -hmm. yourself. Go to Burger King. Enjoy yourself a Whopper because you ain't going to make it if you're stuck in rules because I guarantee you the moment that you can't meet a rule, you'll feel like you failed. You won't meet the expectation and you'll beat the crap out of yourself and you'll quit. That's why people quit. Yeah, I think the the whole um, understanding on how to be coachable has been kind of a huge thing for me because I've realized that it's not just coaches you learn from. It's the conversations I've had in community, in, in the community, emails that I've had, everything, every yes. time I open myself up and allow myself to just listen and receive what I'm hearing, it, it could be a coachable moment of, now I understand that that's not me. Or it's, wow, this was a part that I was trying to understand that I just didn't. And I think the big part about it is trusting that process and going through it and just literally shut up, you know, go through it. If, if it's not the right coach, when you finish coaching with them, you know, did you get the results? How did it go? Like for me, it's easy. I told my coach, I said, well, if we do good this year, we'll coach again next year. You know, you'll be my coach the following year or I decide that they may not be the right fit, whatever the case is, but I'm going through the process completely and open, allowing myself to kind of be molded by this person and learning upon the way. Not just, I'm not just a yes, man, do this. Yes. I'm trying to learn why. I don't question him. I ask him questions and wonder, hey, why are we doing it this week? Well, I like how it hits this and it does this. It shocks that. It's like, I had no idea. It's not, hey, why are you doing this? I don't do it that way. It's I want to learn. If you're not learning within the process, you are just saying yes. And this is what I think. Then then you're you're not getting the process Mm -hmm. because you're just following rules again. See, you want to create your own principles. That's what a coach is helping you do. What's a coach helping you do? Move you through your comfort zone. Get you out of that old identity and self-author a new identity. To, re- to release those old habits and create new skills. That's what a coach's job is. But a coach can't do it for you. You have to do it. And I will tell you, I've watched very fast shifting in Felix and Jason in the community I've I, I, tremendously fast 
And I'm seeing in David, tremendously fast. What do they all have in common? They're coachable. They're coachable. That's one thing that my son, Brett, he is so coachable. That's why he's always excelled. He's excelling again because he's coachable. You know, he's kind of a pain in the ass, but he's coachable. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like he's being coached by nobody, but he still follows it so diligently. That's what coaching's for. Now you're getting it. It's always having somebody help move you to mm-hmm. the next level. And so in shift coaching, it's about moving your habitual state. That's what we're going to be teaching you in the event. This is an important event, people. I promise you'll change your life. And so even in the community, if you have questions in the community, uh, don't be afraid to ask. That's what the coaches are there for. They're there to help you answer questions. And you know what? And it doesn't mean that you don't have an opinion, but opinion are like, you know what they're like, right? Everybody's got one. And so I'm just telling you, if you have an opinion, you have a belief, and you're, if you're going to defend it, you're locked in. You're done. That means you can't see something new. You can't experience a new reality. Why? Because your opinion will lock you into that reality, and you will look for evidence to make sure that opinion is right. Yeah. That's not you. That's mm-hmm. the ego. And that's a big difference. Trust me, it's a big, big difference. Sorry, I dominated this one a little bit. I don't know. I got streamed and I don't know. I'm on another whole frequency right now, just so you know. All right. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by like, share, subscribe. Where are the links? The links are right below the show notes. Oh, boy. Brain is starting to shut down. As always, until next time, stay inspired.